Hello everyone. In this episode, we are going to understand how to process POST requests using Fastify. So let's start. For implementing the POST API call using Fastify, we already have a project set up in place with Nodemon and Fastify configured. To find out how this configuration can be achieved, please find a link in the description for an episode which covered this topic. For the POST API, we are going to use a JSON file as a source of data, which will contain a list of products. So let's go ahead and create the data file. We'll create a folder called data, within which we'll create a file called products.json. We'll populate it with some data, which we have already created. As we can see in this file, there is a listing of four products here, which has few attributes. For us to be able to work with this data, we will first have to read the contents of this file. For that, we'll use the file this module to read the JSON file. Next, we'll read this JSON file and make it available to the application. We'll use the read file sync function for that. The directory name global points to the current directory for the application. We'll define the file path relative to this. Next, we will parse this JSON file and make it available as a JavaScript object. We will then implement a get all API call. The reason we need this is once we have implemented the post API call, which is responsible for creating a new product, we will then call the get API to verify whether the newly created product is available as part of that call or not. Let's go ahead and implement the get call first. We will define the handler function for the get call, which will return a list of all the products. Let's check if this API is working as expected. We will start up the server and then make an API call. As we see here, we are able to see a listing of all the products. Next, we will implement the post call, which will be responsible for adding a new product. We'll copy some section of the code in the interest of time. We will then read the content the details of the new product into a new product constant from the request body. Next, we will define a variable called max ID. The reason we need this is we need to assign unique identifier to the new product. If we were using a database, we would normally use an auto incremented primary key for achieving that. However, as we are using a JSON file for this call, we will have to identify the maximum ID manually and then increment the value and assign it to the new product. We will iterate through the list of products and then get the ID value for the current iteration and check if it is greater than max ID. If it is, we will assign that value to max ID. Once we have the maximum ID available, then we will assign an ID attribute to the new product 
after increment the max id by one and then we will push this new product into the product list array we will also return this new product as part of the response now let's check if this api is working first we'll again call the get api to ensure that this is working as expected and it does next we will create a post call to the products api and we will pass in product details as a json body we'll copy an existing product and modify it a bit we'll remove the id as id will be assigned for the new product let's check if this call will work as expected as we see here we have caught a response for the newly created product and a identifier which is unique has been assigned to it which is five earlier it was only the maximum id was four now let's make the get call again to check if this newly created product is available as part of the get call or not As we see here, the new product is now available as part of the Get API call. If you like this episode and if you would like to watch more such episodes in the future, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. At SpinSage, we provide digital consultancy services including web and mobile app development. For inquiries, please visit spinsage.com.